So now you got to get your head off of, you know, America and the government structure that we have in America. You got to get your head off of that. Because when you start thinking about American government, you start thinking about, you know, 1776, Declaration of Independence. That's how we got our government. That's how we got our laws. You start thinking about the founding fathers and saying, well, that's how we got our government. That's how we got our laws. It came from these guys. And that's not the case. Our government structure was set up long before the founding fathers was born, long before America was established. And how fitting that we look into the book of Romans and we find in Romans, it's saying that God, you know, is saying that, you know, I put these people in charge. The powers that be was ordained by me, you know, so the government is in charge because God put them in charge. How fitting that is the book of Romans that says that when we go back and look at ancient Rome, our system of government today in America is set up exactly like ancient Rome. Now, in ancient Rome, you know, we both had, you know, three branches of government. We both had, you know, a Roman Senate, you got a U.S. Senate. Rome had executive and legislative branches, just like the U.S. Both had written laws and codes. Uh, the Roman government could veto, just like we could veto. Rome had uh, a social class, just like we have a social class. Rome had Capitol Line Hill. We have Capitol Hill. Uh, Rome had two councils that held the highest position in government. We have a president. We have a vice president. And, you know, it's the same. The list goes on and on. You know, this is something that you got to look at as suspect. When you go and you look at these things and you start to look at our government structure, we can see clearly, you know, where it came from. So now there is no way we can look at, you know, ancient Roman uh, government, the whole structure and look at our government structure today and say that, you know, it's not the same in some ways. We got to look at that and see it for what it is. But it's weird that nobody connects the dots. Now, we look at that. We look in the book of Romans and it's telling us that God wants us to obey authority and obey the government. Then. When we look at Hebrews 13, 17, it says, obey, obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourself for they watch for your souls as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief for that is unprofitable for you. Now it's telling you, hey, obey them, be happy. If you act mad or sad, you know, it's, it's not going to be good for you. But, you know, 1 Peter 2, 13 through 15 says, Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme. It says, submit yourself to every ordinance of man. Think about that. Or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him, for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well or unto governors. Like, think about what it's saying here. We're talking about a government structure. We know government, when we, when we hear governors, most people who don't read the Bible wouldn't fathom that word being in there. And this, this is from, you know, uh, King James Version. So I was talking about governors. We know in our system of government, we have governors. It goes on to say, for so is the will of God that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. So it's telling you to basically obey. Obey these governors, obey your king, obey, you know, this whole government structure. Now, as I've said before and as I've read before, we know we get our judicial court system from the book of Ezra. Now, when we go to Ezra uh 7 11 it says now this is the copy of the letter that the king artaxerxes gave unto ezra the priest the scribe even a scribe of the words of the commandments of the lord and of his statutes to israel and thou ezra after the wisdom of thy god that is in thine hand set magistrates and judges 
which may judge all the people that are beyond the river, all such as know the law of thy God, and teach ye them that know them not. And whosoever will not do the law of thy God, and the law of the king, let judgment be executed speedily upon him, whether it be unto death, or to banishment, or to confiscation of goods, or to imprisonment. Now, again, when you read that, this is where we clearly get our court system from. You know, the Bible tells you to pay taxes. It's telling you that you're going to face consequences for not obeying the law. It's telling you that you'll be put to death. Everything that we see in our, our government system today, our structure, you read in the Bible, it's telling you to obey governors, to obey this, obey that. When we look at all this stuff, on the surface, you can say that, you know, what's wrong with that? It's all well and good. We can't have a society without rules, without laws, without, you know, a structure. We all know that. But we can't look at our government structure today. We see how corrupt it is. And here you have the Bible telling you that God put this here. But these people are clearly evil and corrupt. So how are we accepting it? So the whole point is you have to look at this from a different way and say, well, wait a minute. This whole thing is one big scam. What we have is people who created this mess to give validity to the power that they wanted to have over us. And that's exactly what has taken place. So a lot of people have no clue that when they look into the Bible, when they start reading in Ezra, that the whole law structure, the government structure that we have today is sitting right there in the Bible. This is why you, you know, put your hand on the Bible in court when you swear in and everything like that. This is why when you go to almost every single courthouse, a lot of people don't know this either. Go to the courthouse. You will almost at every courthouse find a copy of the Ten Commandments. You'll find a plaque somewhere. A lot of people, when they go to court, they don't look around, you know, on the ground. You just go to court. You handle business. But look around. I mean, look on the wall. Look for a plaque. It's usually always a plaque of the Ten Commandments at every courthouse. Now, I know some courthouses, you know, uh, outlawed it or took them down in some places. And in most cases, you'll still find that plaque of the Ten Commandments at a lot of the courthouses. See, what happened was when they first tried to, you know, start instilling these laws, it was about, you know, God wants you to do this. God says that. God says, obey that. Then once they got the people to accept their authority and accept them as the powers that be, you know, I went from, well, God told us to do this. God told us to do that. God wants us to tell you to do this. And then, you know, once they gained control and got control over the people, then that slowly changed. It shifted from, you know, it being about God's law to it being about the government's law. And they slowly separated the two, but they both the same, but they slowly separated. And over time, you know, you had god's law over here you had the government's law when they really one in the same but since they know that this whole god's law is a scam to give validity to their law the government's law they push it to the side now you, you separate church and state you, you take the uh, bible from out of school and now you have what they really wanted in the first place which is you know government control and government law and now, as you can see, when you watch TV, when you start looking around, you can see the, the government basically distance themselves from, you know, anything that has to do with the Bible, because they have to if they're going to get away with the sick things that they have been getting away with. So since knowledge has increased and information has increased, you know, they can't just simply bring a person to court and say that, well, you know, you broke God's law. You would say, you know, what God? And every man has a right to face his accuser and God is not talking. God is not going to come to court and say, yeah, you broke my law. So they had to basically get us from under God's law and put us under, you know, government law, under their law, under their jurisdiction. Now, for anybody who know about the straw man, we know it's basically two of us. You have the real flesh and blood, you, and you have the corporate fiction created uh, to basically get benefits or reap benefits from 
things that you do on a corporate level or on a business level. So the government is getting benefits from your straw man. Now, God is basically the government straw man. You know, God is a fiction made up by the government so they can reap benefits. So the government is getting benefits from our straw man and from their own straw man, which is God. But we, we know, of course, it's much bigger and deeper than that. But when you look at it that way, it's basically the same thing. Government has a straw man just like we do, and they're getting all the benefits, the benefits from theirs and ours as well. Now, another reason why the government has to separate itself from, you know, the Bible is because it has to fulfill Bible prophecy. And we know most of the prophecies in the Bible has to deal, you know, with government. Now, forget about all the prophecies that take place or, or that is fulfilled within the Bible itself because, you know, there's no way to prove those prophecies, you know, are real or came true. You know, forget the prophecies that deal with blood moons or, you know, that deals with any kind of, uh, you know, celestial events and things like that. Forget those prophecies. You know, blood moons and stuff like that are things that have been happening long before the Bible was written. So we can forget those now. What, what we are left with is prophecies that has been fulfilled by man or governments, mostly governments. So we're talking about Israel becoming a nation, government. Now, when you look at America now, they are basically fulfilling the prophecy of Isaiah 17, 1, which basically saying that, you know, uh, Damascus will no longer be a city, but a heap of ruins. And Damascus is in Syria, and it's been, you know, bombed lately by russia and government but again this is government this is man fulfilling bible prophecy and this is what you got to understand it's not something you know magical that's coming true out of thin air this is something that man is making come true to fulfill bible prophecy so by them separating themselves from the bible it makes it look like this is something that's happening on its own and not them trying to fulfill bible prophecy now, anybody with any common sense can see that if the Bible is real or the God of the Bible, you know, is real, there's no way in the world he would put these governments in charge. There's no way he would make them, you know, the powers that be or the authority figure over us representing, you know, the God of the Bible. Because, you know, before, during and after Rome was going around preaching the Bible and trying to make people become Christians they were breaking every single law in the Bible. They was raping and killing and murdering men, women, and children. They were doing everything against that Bible. So why would God turn around and put them in power when they are clearly breaking his law? It says in Romans that they will not be a terror to good, but unto evil. So how are they going to be a terror to evil when they themselves are doing evil? And I've heard people say that you know, the government is evil and they work for Satan and, you know, they have nothing to do with the God of the Bible. But the government gives churches 501c3 tax exempt status. They do everything they can to keep churches open and going up, you know, in the communities. So when you look at these 501c3s, you see that it's basically saying that, you know, the government owns the church and they can use the church basically for whatever they need to use it for. But you have to realize that, of course, the government has to separate itself from religion because of the sick things that they have to do. You can't be walking around preaching Christianity and stuff like that. And then, you know, bombing kids, you know, letting people starve to death, letting these cops go out here and shoot people and shoot people up. So... They have to walk that fine line. They only really use religion when it benefits them. Now, if the government came out and said that, you know, we are basically anti-Christ, we don't follow God, we don't follow the Bible, da-da-da, then, you know, religious people will go crazy. They would, they would flip out. But you have the FCC, you have the government, allowing TV shows like Family Guy and The Simpsons to basically make a mockery of God, you know, and Jesus. 